And so we will have audio there, and I'm going to get, or a video there, and I'm going to get audio here. And we'll turn, turn off the yes. noise. Yes, much better. We could also open a window, probably. No, not, not no. today. So no. yesterday was nice and cool. Today, today it's hot. It's 80 uh, or... Uh, oh, really? Yes. It's, it's unbelievable. Well, not unbelievable, but it, warm. <laughs> okay. And then we'll start a recording. Okay, that looks like it's going. Just fine. Okay. Hello. Yes. <laughs> so let me do the little intro introduction and then you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Hello, my name is Daniel Stilwell. I'm the editor for the IFTA e-newsletter. And we have with us today here at IFTA in Spain, Umberta Telfener. Bravissimo. Okay, okay, wonderful. Bravissimo. <laughs> so yes, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, what kind of work do you do? What kind of clinician do you identify as? Okay, I am here with a, a double role. Mm -hmm. One is as a clinician that has been working for, I can't tell you how many years, but sure. 40 and more. Mm -hmm. And um, I am a teacher of the Milan School of mm -hmm. Family Therapy. I am there uh, responsible for foreign affairs. And I teach, I see clients, and I supervise. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, the main... Oh, no, and I write books for them or write articles, uh, sure. theoretical articles. This is one uh, of my voices mm -hmm. today. The second voice is that I'm here as president of the European Family Therapy Association. Okay. Actually, I was kindly invited to this conference and that I'm enjoying very much. Good, good. And I'm meeting new friends, I'm meeting old friends, uh, I'm seeing people that I usually see. So it's, it's as Congress have to be, mm -hmm. you know, a, a sort of a bubble in which a lot of self-organizing events happen in mm -hmm. some ways. And, um, well, in terms of clinician, I'm a systemic uh, Milan school therapist, but Milan school um, was, has separated in 1980 Mara Selvini from Bosco and Cecchin. Okay. 1980, so a long, 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 40 years ago. And uh, I belong to Bosco and Cecchin school since then. Okay. Bosco and Cecchin have died mm -hmm. in the last, uh, well, a lot of years, between 20 and 10 years. And we are a number of uh, teachers who are going along, keeping the soul of the masters, mm -hmm. but naturally changing some things. And naturally changing because, you know, we keep their premise that we have very few guidelines and that um, that were hypothesization, circularity mm -hmm. and curiosity mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, we need to dance with the clients. Right. This is, is our game. But then a lot of things happen. The war, migrants, uh, poverty. Uh, the world is so different now than when our masters were teaching mm -hmm. that we had to adapt the, the, the model in some ways of course. and bring in things to do, doing things with people, uh, dancing in a different way. Um, we have do a lot of pro bono mm -hmm. therapy because uh, a lot of people can afford to, to work. And as professionals, as teachers of the Milan School, what we are underlining right now, and then I, it's three things, I think. I would think that the three things that we are underlining most, I'm thinking about it now, but I think uh, you made me think about it. Okay. Uh, it's ethic, aesthetics, and politics. Ethics, aesthetics, and politics. As okay. three sides of a same coin. Okay. You can't work without these three aspects mm -hmm. in these troubled, I call them hypermodern times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and to the, the outsider not knowing what exactly you mean by that mm -hmm. yet, all three of those have power yes. um, embedded into them. So, power that is not only 
power that I hold, right, right, but also the other holds. It's like, according to me, if in uh, in these periods, well, the school of Milano has looked at epistemology for a long, long time. Right. I think that in these times we have to um, associate to epistemology ontology. Mm -hmm. Me not meaning is the, the world right or real or not, but the respect for the other person mm -hmm. and the respect for the ontology, mm -hmm. for the being mm -hmm. of the other person. That creates a huge change because according to me, we are not in our heads anymore. And my interest is not of doing smart proposals mm -hmm. or, but is to really find out who you are, mm -hmm. who the other is. So there is this, it, ontology in this sense, um, Villeros de Castro comes to my mind. Okay. It comes from anthropology. Yeah. And the shift anthropology did in saying, let's stop dancing among each other. Let's see who we are dealing with and be respectful with the hypothesis we, we make with them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that is a big change. A question that I, I knew I wanted to ask you was about the dance. How do you feel like the dance has changed in the world of teletherapy? That is a very big question. I find teletherapy sometimes a little bit boring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get a little bit more distracted. Uh, but I think that my distraction is my prejudice. Okay, okay. Because I have I'm a, a doer, mm -hmm. um, so not having the possibility to move in the room with the client or doing ma and making them do things so much, um, sometimes I lose a little bit of interest. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting better at it. Okay, as we but, all are. Good. Uh, yeah, um, because I, uh, I e even done some EMDR uh, through through tele televideo through mm -hmm. a Skype session, um, I well my imprinting was in person and right. uh, I prefer it, but I do a lot non in person. Mm -hmm. I have to be very motivated myself and very on target, mm -hmm. and I think that the real difference is the attitude of the clinician. Okay, okay. Would you say so? I would say that we're discovering uh, uh, the importance of fit with, mm -hmm. the, with the online interactions, just as important as fit was for issues of poverty or addiction mm -hmm. or family dynamics. Um, so it just becomes another dimension of uh, viability and intervention. Now your presentation has a vague and uh, enticing title, it's like Procedures as Milestones. In therapy, what do you mean by that? Uh, yeah, I know. I, 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 they give you, you, you. I was in a completely different state of mind when I wrote it. Now I probably wouldn't use that, and I wouldn't do in such a conference. Now that I've been here a uh, whole morning, yes. something so vague. Uh, I totally agree. It's vague. Hey, enticing, um, though. It, it was. It drew uh, me. It drew me in. What I would try to do. What I'll try to do, is try to think of a metaphorical scaffold mm -hmm. because I think that when we enter therapy we need to know certain steps not everything mm -hmm. if not we lose and I don't think I'm not in favor of manualization of you know do right, this and right. this and this and especially in a systemic but I think we have some milestones a scaffold a metaphorical scaffold that has to do with the relationship with the other. Mm -hmm. um, it has to do to what to attend, uh, how to become from two who do not know each other, an observing system mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. and how 
the many positioning that the clinician needs to take, I would like to talk about some, not even, mm. uh, of these milestones in order to reflect on them. Okay. Do you see that as more of a, uh, a treatment plan or more as a philosophy? No. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't. Oh, that's a good question. Thank you. Uh, I would call it not a treatment plan because it's, you know, it's too rigid. Mm -hmm. uh, not a philosophy because it's too abstract. I probably would call it as some moves that I have in my pocket ah. that help me uh, be sure, uh, be tranquil, be relaxed with the other not get frightened with the other person interesting okay something that if i knew some of them and i do them uh, it proceeds in some way okay. the relationship so proceeds. almost like a uh, a postmodern puzzle that can find new shapes depending on who you're working with fantastic Okay, all right. Thank you, I'll use it. Can I quote you? <laughs> of course, of course. Um, now, you're also here to talk about EFTA, you know, the European Family Therapy Association. Association, yes. So. Um, I met today the uh, Australian uh, president mm -hmm. of the Australian Association. I met the American Association. Actually, what we all would like to do is to create a federation. Mm. Federation of... Uh, because I really think that what we need is to compare notes on what kind of clients are arriving, what we can do in these troubled times, mm -hmm. what we could do with... Today I went to a beautiful session and, uh, and um, on health um, with uh, René Singh mm -hmm. and, uh, and they were talking about what kind of interventions can be done in these troubled times. And um, uh, Linda, uh, what's her name? Um, she's an American and we met in the 70s. Uh, oh God, you shut it down. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, I, think I can give it to you. Can I? Yeah, go for it. If you can step over. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Hmm? There you go. Um, is it okay? Am I talking too much? You are not talking too much. Um, okay. I will check time, but now yeah, we've we we've got we've got five minutes. Okay. Um, she is this lady. She is Judith Landau. Oh yes, yes, Landau, right? Landau. Yes. Okay. Oh, Landau. Okay, that's the. And. So this morning you attended a presentation a with pres Judith Landau. Uh, yes, we were actually in the public. Mm -hmm. The presenter was René Singh and, okay. uh, and Tom Edwards and mm -hmm. others. And, uh, um, and it came out, this possibility of, of having first order intervention, not specialistic as therapy, mm -hmm. for example, uh, household with friends for uh, people who uh, who or everybody around them died or things like that so i think we have to get out of the room of therapy mm. and we have to think of many interventions not specialistic mm -hmm. but systemic mm -hmm. very interestingly systemic that can help the world as we are right now okay all right and you see your role as president as being an advocate or a voice for this kind of thinking? Absolutely, okay. yes. Absolutely. For um, political and social procedures. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Uh, well, thank you so much for talking us, uh, to us about your work, some ideas. Um, I'd like to end on something fun. So you are president of EFTA. You're from Italy? Yes, Roma. Um, so let's, let's flip the coin. Where outside of Europe do you like to travel for yourself, for fun, for engagement? Well, everywhere. Uh, <laughs> uh, what I did all my life, and I would love to continue doing, I go to shamans. Mm. And I sit in their little huts mm -hmm. and look 
not to become a shaman, but to see how they treat mine. Mm -hmm. So I went uh, 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 at many, many places. But let's talk a minute about Malaga. Malaga okay. is fantastic. Yes. Relaxed, hot, pleasant mm -hmm. with people who help us. Uh, mm -hmm. If you don't understand, it's, it's a fantastic setting. Yes. Yes. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, and so, yes, we'll be seeing you. Thank you for your engagement and take care. Thank you. Thank you. You are. Yay. See, 15 minutes. That was, that was good. That was very good. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. I actually got to go to EFTA, um, this past year. In uh, in Slovenia. Yes. Oh, you came to yes. Ljubljana. Yes, I got to present uh, four times. Oh, good <laughs> yeah. for you. Yeah, they. Uh, I we a colleague and I put together uh, four presentations because we're like we're Americans. We don't know. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll just put some stuff out there, uh, and all of them got accepted, and it was it was quite a, a good conference. conference. So. I thought it was a good conference. We had a lot of. Uh, I was naturally I was there, but mm -hmm. I was uh, I didn't go. I 